Hello everyone, and welcome to Legends, Cryptids, and Creepypastas. Today we're going over a Japanese legend and cryptid known as the Kappa. Now there are two things I want to say. One, I found a lot of interesting information, which I will be sharing. And two, I'm going to apologize for any mispronunciations of the Japanese names. Um, I don't speak Japanese. So please sit back and enjoy. So what's in a name? Kappa translates to river child. The etymology behind this lies in the word kawa, meaning river, and wapa, stemming from uh, war warawa, meaning child. Its name varies per the different regions of Japan. Some of these different names include Mizuchi, Kawaso, Dankame, and Gowapa. Home sweet home. Kappas can be found all over Japan, but their presence are known to be most prominent in the prefecture of Saga. Kappas don't necessarily need air. They can live both underwater and on land, but seem to be more comfortable in the water. Some accounts say that they can be found in the waters all throughout spring and summer, but during the fall they migrate to the mountains and become mountain gods known as Yama no Kami, and then return to their normal rivers during the spring. Japanese Beliefs Shinto Beliefs Impish Kappa belongs to the category of Sujin, which is a water deity. When a water deity's temporary animal form, or uh, Yorishiro, attracts a Kami, which is a god or spirit, they combine to create a Kappa. Japanese Buddhist Beliefs Kappa is described a little more impish and lecherous and compare them more to ogres. Don't be fooled by the Shinto beliefs of them being Sujin. They are demons that are known to cause a pranking stir when they want to. There are cases where they turn into murderous monsters. Today, however, they are seen as cute and lovable, but in ancient times, people were terrified of them. All in the looks. Kappas are reptilian, about the size of a small of a child, bipedal, somewhat cross between a turtle, duck, frog, and monkey, depicted as having beaks and shells, commonly portrayed as having green, blue, or yellow scaly skin. The arms are monkey-like. They have webbed hands and feet. There is a notable flattened bald spot on the head called a plate circled by straight long hair that droops downward. The plate is always wet and the water is the physical representation of their life force. They are great swimmers and they have a fishy scent. The plate. When a kappa ventures on land, it usually wears some sort of head protection to protect the water and the plate on its head. If the water dried up or the plate itself was wounded, it could render the kappa incapable of using its powers and could even cause its death. Known behavior. The kappa's pranking behavior can vary. They could fart loudly, look up women's dresses or skirts, back in the day known as kimonos, but they also were known to love eating children. So their behavior would really depend upon your own luck as well as the morality of the individual kappa that you would encounter. As much as they are known prankter, pranksters, they are also very polite and highly value proper decorum. It is impossible for them to break an oath once one is made. How to escape. If you bow to a kappa, they cannot help but bow back, as it is proper etiquette in Japan. The water would then spill out of their plate onto the floor. As this is the source of their energy and life, they would remain still in that position until the plate is refilled with water from the river where it lives. No other river will do. If a person was skilled in wrestling, they could challenge the kappa to a wrestling match to try to spill the water or rip off its limbs. If you want to avoid them in general, they do not like ginger, iron, or sesame, so you could keep some of these in your pocket. How to be friend. If you want to show that you are friendly to a kappa and mean them no harm, throw them some cucumbers. In fact, 
The Kappa's love for food sometimes takes over the way that they act around humans, befriending them to get a bite of their favorite treats, such as natto, a fermented soybeans, soba, buckwheat noodles, winter squash, nasu, Japanese eggplant, and cucumbers. Cucumbers are their all-time favorite food, being the only food that ranks higher than human flesh. They can do favors in return, such as fishing or land irrigation. Going swimming? If you were a parent of a kid in ancient Japan and taking the kids down to the river to swim, you might want to bring along some cucumbers. The same number as each child you would have, and you would inscribe the name of each child on a cucumber. This way, the Kappas would know which child not to bother in exchange for the tasty treat. Bountiful Benefits Not all Kappas are bad. Some are truly benevolent and have been worshipped because of their unforgettable good acts. During the early periods in Japan, some Kappas did share their advanced understanding of medicine to people, especially in the art aspect of setting bones. Now, what do you think? Are the Kappas real? Did they die off? Are they purely legend? Share your opinions below. If you have had any personal experience with meeting a Kappa, please feel free to share your experiences in the comment section as well. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.